The Killing Stone was started by my father. He started it in 1950. He had been a stone cutter himself, and his father, John McKeown, had come down here from Drada to work in the quarries here around the turn of the century, around 1905. Up here on the top right hand corner is John McKeown, that's my granddad there. Yeah. yeah. So he's originally from Termin Fecken, uh, near, near Drogheda, just north of Dublin. When dad was 13, he joined his dad and went up to the quarry to serve, start serving his time. One day he went over to the quarries in Carlo and he got a very rough piece of stone off them, roughly shaped piece that they weren't really interested in using themselves. And he brought it back and he and his friends lobbed it off the truck and up in the village green. And he started to take it out a twist and he, he, he made that very rough stone into a cube. He paid 20 pounds for the stone and he sold it back to the quarry for 60 pounds after, you know, a week's work and his friends helping him to lap it over onto each face and got it back up on the truck and got it back to Carlo, to the guys. Um, so that, that was how we started in 1950. That's, that was the birth of, of McKeown stone. We work with a Kilkenny limestone from our quarry 30 miles away, based down in three castles in the county of Kilkenny. It's a limestone, a crinoidal limestone, formed 350 million years ago. At that time, Ireland was at the bottom of the, the deep blue sea and layers and layers of tiny little shells and crinoids and brachiopods were laid down. Sculptors love it particularly, and architects also love it because every time that you touch blue limestone with a punch or uh, you bush hammer it, you have all the various honing stages, every time you interact with it, 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 it changes colour. So you have a palette of colour to work with within the one stone. Historically, it would have been used for the, the crosses, the Celtic crosses, the monuments, and then the, the churches. A lot of the stone cutters and stone masons would have been employed by the churches. Indeed, in Stradbally here now, we have a, a quarry, which is it's disused now, but quite a number of churches, including the one just up the street, was built using this stone. And in, in those days, the stone masons, the stone cutters were known as journeymen because they, they went from job to job. So they, they could be on a job for a year or two and then they would go to the next job and they went home to their families once every, maybe every couple of months. So that, that was the way of the world then. It's probably one of the reasons why there's a, a history in this area of, of stone cutting and stone work because of the, there was a quarry in the locality. Jimmy McKeown was a master uh, st a stone carver, well renowned for Celtic crosses, and he had great, I suppose, sympathy and uh, appreciation of sculptors and any sculptors that would come by the way, he would look after them and, and help them out. So there was always, I think, kindness and generosity shown to sculptors. And uh, we that's a tradition that I uh, know Jimmy's son James has maintained and myself here in the last 20 years as sculptors come we give them time and interest and give them as much help as, as, as possibly we can. The respect is very real and genuine for the artists here. We love the fact that people come here and create their, their pieces in amongst us.